my name is Ancha Baranova. I'm from George Mason University, which is located in the vicinity of DC in Northern Virginia. I also collaborate a lot in, with a variety of Russian labs. And the study I came to present today is partially done in Russia. Uh, so this is very interesting study. This is a dose response conference. So everybody is interested in what happening with uh, signaling when one type of cells within the body or outside of the body got stressed and how the other cells receive the stress signal and somehow translate the signal into the response, which might be a very beneficial response. So the key question for me here is what does transmit the signal? So we think that we found the holy grail of it, which I'm very excited about, and this is extracellular DNA. It looks like when you stress the cells in any way, uh, enough to kill the most damaged cells, to clear them out, those cells die, nothing bad with this. We have lots of cells dying in our body all the time. Those little guys die for you to keep you healthy. They release DNA. So those cells release DNA, and this DNA is damaged DNA. So the degree of damage in this DNA signals to other cells, explaining to them what is the current level of stress now or the level of anticipated stress, something which we will know soon enough. So in case of chronic disease uh, or any kind of uh, environmental insult, that means that cells which are under the insult send the signal by dying to other cells that something is wrong and other cells muscle up and able to respond to the stimulus. This is called adaptive response. So we found that extracellular DNA, which is released by dying cells, is this signal. Now, what is the practical importance of it? Of course, we all interested in having some uh, uh, something introduced into the clinic, something somehow helps the patients, etc. So I think there are two things coming out of it. One of this is that we can use extracellular DNA, which is very cheap, and we can get it from the same patient uh, as a mean to condition the cells of this patient. For example, in case of uh, cell therapy, which is based on stem cells, we get the cells from the patient, we differentiate them in culture, and then we have to return them back to the patient. This is a well-known concept. However, there is a problem here. The problem is that cells returned back to the body usually do not survive for a long time because uh, the conditions in the deceased body are not as good as uh, all pampered conditions in the petri dish, right? So those cells gonna die. And yes, they help a little bit, but they do not last as long as we wish them to last. So how to make them last longer? We can precondition them with oxidized, damaged form of patients woven DNA by exposure to this DNA in vitro. And after they get all muscled up by this, we return them back to the patient and that will work. So this is one practical thing. Another practical thing is even more interesting. We found that normal cells and cancer cells are actually very differentially respond to the presence of the oxidized DNA signal. So whatever is bad for normal cells, whatever is stressing them out to the degree that they do not have adaptive response but have true stress response and they might actually die from this uh, stress signal as such, whatever is bad for normal cells is still good for cancer cells. So they are substantially less sensitive, those cancer cells, to the uh, environmental signal of oxidized DNA. For cancer patient, it means that when we treat patient with cancer, uh, patient experienced massive death of cells. That's what we want to see, actually. We want to kill cancer cells as fast as possible. So those cells die, release enormous amount of oxidized DNA, and this oxidized DNA serves as a stress for normal cells, but it serves as a survival signal for remaining cancer cells. So we have put our patient in the strong jeopardy uh, by doing chemotherapy, by having those post-chemo effects. Those are known as side effects of chemotherapy. Everybody knows this. So how to get rid of them? Well, there is a way how we can get rid of extracellular DNA in patient circulation. 
There is a method called plasmapheresis. It has been done many times to many kinds of patients, mostly for immune disease, with some kind of uh, unspecific sorbent. This is when blood of the patient taken out, put through certain contour where cellular elements are removed and the plasma is filtered or sorbed on something to remove so-called toxins, unspecific toxins. That can be done, and it was done many times. It helps in many situations. But we think that we can do it more specifically. We can put the sorbent for DNA, which is very cl clear, easy sorbent, which has been used many times in various kinds of molecular biology applications. This is glass, basically broken glass, little particles of glass, which treated in a special way to bind DNA. So we put patient serum through this glass prep that sorbs DNA, and then we move plasma back to the patient. In this case, we remove this oxidized DNA and we put cancer cells and normal cells in, in, in this case in, in even conditions. So they do not have to uh, right now die, those normal cells, from the stress signal while making cancer cells dividing faster. So this might be a very good answer to side effects of chemotherapy, which helps augment current regimens. That's uh, basically what it is about on a practical note. Another thing is that what does it mean for people who are not really severely sick, so they do not require cellular therapy or cancer uh, treatment? Well, normal people, right? Healthy people. So for them, the level of oxidized DNA in the blood might serve as biomarker of chronic stress. So we want to put the stress down, basically, and we will do some things to put stress down, uh, oxidative stress or other kinds of stress. We try to sleep better, change our lifestyle, have better diets, and eat a whole bunch of vitamins. That's what everybody's doing. But we really do not know whether this thing helps or not. So how we could have an objective measure of whether it helps to us, to particular individual. Well, we can measure levels of oxidized DNA before and after. This is simple non-invasive measure. Could be done by uh, uh, the extraction of DNA from venous blood. So it's not very difficult. And by that, we have objective measure. So it does relate to everybody. This is, in a nutshell, the discovery which we made together with our Russian colleagues, the lab of uh, Professor Veika in the uh, Research Center for Medical Genetics in Moscow. And uh, now there are so many fields open. We want to go for all those directions and try all those, uh, 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 all those uh, uh, various kinds of directions of the research, uh, and we try to put it into the practice by all those different applications.